Welcome to Tamara Tattletales. I'm Tamara and I spill the tea on your favorite reality stars. Married at First Sight Season 14, Episode 10, After Party, Boston. This episode featured Karen and Tootie plus a special guest, Kevin Fredericks from the Bold and Beautiful podcast. So the cocktail was called the Strawberry Seduction. The ingredients included strawberry, vodka, powdered sugar, lemon juice, and soda water. First of all, I want to know if you guys noticed that Tootie was sporting some new neck tattoos in this episode. They go all the way up his neck now, as you can see in these before and after pictures. Now keep in mind that this show is filmed after the season ends, so he got those tattoos after Decision Day. Now, Keisha plays the scene where Tootie is explaining to Dr. Viviana that he needs his wife to cook and clean for him and the insinuation that since she works from home, she should have time to cook and clean. So Keisha says, this is a safe space and coming from a place of love, but a woman's worth is not determined by her domestic abilities, by her ability to cook and clean. Thank you, Keisha. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to claim that you didn't articulate it right. And he's like, nope, I said it right. He explained that it's frustrating when he comes home from work and there was no progress done at home. She works from home, but there is no work being done. And it makes him question if she even has a job. Then he says, well, she has a job, but it's frustrating. So what he's saying here isn't clear to me. It kind of sounds like he's saying that she works from home, but she's not really working. Plus, she's not cooking or cleaning. But if he's not there, how does he know she's not working if that's what he meant? I don't know. Every time he tries to re-explain his cooking and cleaning demands, I get more confused. Keisha asked Kevin what he thinks, and he said after watching that scene, he's going to go home and cook tonight. Karen called it chore play. She said nothing makes her happier than coming home after a day of work to a clean house and home cooked meal from her husband. And then Keisha mentioned that we're living in a time when we can have almost any type of food delivered. And then Kevin chimed in with such a high pitched voice. Like I had to listen to it three times to understand what he said. Nobody can bring nothing, no claim chowder available, not even baked beans. I don't know that he added much to this episode, but I guess it was worth a try. Anyway, Tootie said that after the cameras left, he and Katina had a conversation about that scene. And he said he just wants it to be known that his wife is not quiet. And when the cameras go away, she's a wave in that finger and lays into him. So good for you, Katina. So Keisha showed a clip of Katina spanking Tootie while they were playing around with the goodie basket from Dr. Viv. And Tootie said that that basket really helped their marriage and grew their bond tremendously. I took that as that they had sex, but he didn't say that and we didn't hear Keisha ask him. There was some serious cutting going on with the editing of this little Q&A session. Keisha shows a scene where Karen and Mark are meeting with Dr. Viv and she tells Karen not to be so rude and points out how they hit below the belt when they fight. Now, Keisha asked Karen if she was aware that she hits below the belt when she fights prior to getting married. Girl, please, after listening to her daddy, we all knew she hit below the belt. Karen said she knew, but normally she would call one of her friends to get out all of her anger and vent. And it was unfortunate that when she did that in the bathroom at the bowling alley that there was an audience. Girl, there was more than an audience. There was a camera crew and a microphone. Anyway, Tootie said that he and Karen are similar and that they both say that they are going to be better the next time they argue, but because they don't practice it enough, they give their raw emotions every time they fight. Now, that was a good self-awareness moment for Tootie. Karen said that she and Tootie have a lot of talks together on the roof to vent about their spouses, so much so that some people thought they were married. Tootie explained that after the airplane incident that they talked it out and that they get along now. So Keisha asked if she still has hope for her marriage and Karen said that she does have hope because they laugh a lot and have such a good time together and that gives her hope to carry on with the marriage. 
Kevin asked a good question. He said, what is it like getting married this way and running into problems? Because not only are you trying to overcome the problem, but you're still vetting this person to see if the relationship will work. Karen said she's not a quitter and she never quits. And Mark's life is falling apart and she's not going to leave him high and dry when his life is crumbling. Now she keeps mentioning that his life is falling apart other than having to move suddenly, which it appears as though he's moved out now. And losing the landlord mother figure what else is crumbling his mother's situation was there prior to their marriage and he seemed to be handling that on his own i don't get what she's talking about that's falling apart anyway keisha showed them playing with some of the toys that dr viv uh gave in their adult goodie basket and karen said that after she took that photo of mark he wanted a whole photo shoot and kept posing for her and Keisha asked if they continue to use any of those toys. And Karen said, heck no, I don't eat preservatives. And the ball gags were disgusting. Keisha asked Kevin what he thinks of them playing around with the toys. And he gave an odd answer. He said when he's watching them on TV, it's one thing. But being with them in real life, he realizes that they're like real people and they are cool. It was kind of like a starstruck type answer, which is weird, especially since he's done a series of Spectrum commercials. So he knows that people on TV are real. Plus, that didn't answer the question. Anyway, Keisha plays a clip of the scene where the guys were at the ice rink talking about their spouses, where Tootie says that if he was at a one in his marriage, he would give up. And Mark rated Karen a nine when it comes to being helpful, but a six when it comes to being a good listener and knowing when to back off. So when Keisha asked Tootie about his own remarks, he said, I'm dramatic. I was just being dramatic. And that's all I'm going to say. See, he has some self-awareness. He just needs to learn how to be aware of how he's coming across in the moment before Katina serves him a knuckle sandwich. As for Mark's comments, Karen said she had a hard time hearing them being that Mark slid into hostages DMs after she left the show. Now... It's interesting that she said that in a finger pointy, dropping some tea kind of way, being that she has slid into Ryan's DMs from season 13. And the reason I know this is because she was mad that I was mispronouncing Noe's name and she asked him to tell me to pronounce it correctly. Anyway, Karen says hostage is like a cockroach that never disappeared and she comes by the apartment every day. And Mark told her that hostage saw one of his Instagram stories and she came by the rooftop of the apartment to hang out. And she said, hold up, y'all are friends with each other on Instagram? And he said, yeah. Are you privately messaging her too? Well, uh, uh, yeah. I just messaged her to see how she's doing. And Karen said, why? She's not your friend and she does not wish us well. Like... Why are you communicating with her? Oh, I just want to be nice to everybody and I want everybody to like me. I kind of feel like this is a non-traversy because a lot of these cast members drop into each other's DM, even from different seasons, because they kind of build like a sorority fraternity type bond when they do this show. So I don't know if it's all that strange that he was DMing her. What do you guys think? Tootie says he can see Hostage's side because she and Chris went through a hard time so she would naturally gravitate towards others who were going through the process with her for support, which could cause a bond. But on the other hand, he can see why Karen could find it offensive that she was messaging her husband. Karen says, yeah, you can't block me to message my husband. 